in 25 years of serious flea market hunting, I've only turned up two bikes that I would legitimately call antique. Both of them were roached beyond belief and extremely overpriced. That is until last week when we turned up these. We've had lots of things follow us home from the flea markets over the years, including cockroaches, which we won't get into right now, but these two bikes rank right up there with some of the coolest things we've ever found. Both bikes date to the late 1920s to early 1930s, sport Lucky 7 or Gallows style seat posts, and were built up with rims designed to use the now obsolete 28 inch single tube tires. The red bike is easily identifiable as a British made Hercules due to its fancy crank with the Hercules name, but the black bike remains somewhat of a mystery. Both bikes still have their original saddles, which unfortunately aren't really in rideable condition. This red Hercules is in worse condition than the black bike, mainly just because it's less complete. Someone stripped it of its pedals and chain, and I'm guessing that the original tires and hand grips are missing because they've simply rotted away. It's also seen a few rather sloppy coats of paint, while the black bike looks to be all original. Amazingly, the original saddle, which is a super cool person's four rail racer, is still on the bike, and even the person's rear badge on the saddle has survived. I've always been a big fan of these cranks in which the bike manufacturer incorporates their name into the crank. You'll see a little bit more of this type of thing later when my brother shows you his very early Claude Delange. The Hercules has an old flip-flop hub. Unfortunately, the freewheel section is missing, so whoever was riding this last was using it as a fixed gear. These rims look very much like a rim designed for a modern sew-up, but they are not. They were designed for what was known as a 28-inch single tube tire. Now this red Hercules has at least three coats of old paint on it. And that points to something. It tells you that these bikes were extremely well made and usually used over several generations. Let's look at something really interesting that points to that fact. This is the rear axle on this bike. I'm gonna spin it. Now this bike just came out of a barn, it looks like. It's, it's been sitting forever. No one's greased this or adjusted anything. The bearings are as old as this wheel. And I'm gonna spin this, and I just want you to watch how well this spins and continues to spin. Is that amazing or what? Look at that. Wow. I've posted a few photos of this black bike on a couple of antique bike forms, and so far no one's been able to identify the builder. Some think it's British built, while others feel it was made in America. It does have lots of American parts with an American saddle, American New Departure Coaster Brake, American Torrington Comet Six Pedals, and American Handlebars. The extremely old Reynolds tubing decal on the seat tube may point to a British build, but I imagine American bike builders at the time could have imported Reynolds tubing from England. This bike is much more complete than the Red Hercules, and even the 28-inch single tube tires are in pretty good shape. Here's the very early Reynolds tubing decal. I saw an identical decal in a 1914 Reynolds tubing advertisement. I thought it was interesting that this spring saddle has a cloth rather than a leather covering. There are enough distinct remnants of the original head tube decal still on the head tube, such that if I were able to find a match, I would be able to definitively identify it, but so far I have not been able to find a match. The fork crown on the Hercules and this black bike 
both have a nice chrome cover. The pinstriping on the black bike was likely put on by the owner and is probably not factory. Of course, flip up oiler ports are standard on both the Hercules and this black bike. This new departure coaster brake hub is a Model D which dates to after 1932, but it may not be original to the bike. The tires are both period correct but mismatched. The rear tire is a United States rubber special racer. And the front tire is a Pennsylvania rubber company Pen Arrow. The rims also look to be mismatched and I'm guessing this rear rim with the pin striping was a later addition. The wear on the spring saddle exposes the original horsehair padding. So what is a 28 inch single tube tire? Well, they were sort of like modern sew ups except on a modern sew up, the inner tube and the outer rubber is separate. On these original single tube tires, the cloth and the rubber inner tube and the exterior rubber were all vulcanized together in one piece. While both tires are still on this black bike, the rear tire is flat and unrepairable, but I still couldn't resist trying to take the bike for a few very short straight rides. I wouldn't recommend trying this at home, kids. This bike has just come out of a barn, has a rear flat tire, rusty and a few missing spokes, and a very rusty front rim. The only remaining question is do we leave these bikes as period correct wall hangers or restore them to a state where they can become regular riders? I think the bikes would make great displays as artifacts, but I really hate not riding any bike I have. We'll have to wait and see.